Hi everyone, I'm James, M0IOM. ICOM have recently released a couple of firmware updates for the IC7760, so I thought we'd take a quick look at both of those, uh, how to install them on the radio, and also clear up a couple of misconceptions about the, uh, the firmware updates and what functionality they actually, actually provide. So if we pop over to the firmware webpage, um, this is the first uh, update that ICOM released, version 1.10. Um, they've added a few options, support for uh, larger SD cards. They've added uh, a couple of options around audio buffering on the network, uh, fixed, uh, fixed the bug. Uh, and importantly, as we can see here, they've added um, support for what they say is wireless LAN or internet connection. Now, the internet connection uh, is, is definitely an interesting one. Um, we'll talk about the wireless LAN in a moment. However, uh, they've just not long released uh, another firmware update. Uh, for version 1.12, uh, which adds a couple more options around the um, uh, the audio buffering, uh, just to try and uh, deal with packet loss and, and uh, audio retransmission, uh, and they've reduced the amount of data that needs to uh, transmit between the, the controller and the, and the RF deck. But we'll dig into this in a bit more detail once we've uh, installed it on the radio. So we'll pop down uh, to the rig and um, look at how to update the firmware. Right, so we're down at the rig now, and the first thing that we're going to need is an SD card. Uh, this is just an old, uh, old little eight gig SD card, but uh, pretty much any any SD card ought to um, ought to do the trick. Uh, now, first things first, if you've not used it in the radio before, the SD card slot is just in the bottom left hand corner here. So we're going to insert the SD card. The little blue light will uh, will come on there. We'll pop into the menu, over to Set SD Card. And the first thing we're going to do is format the SD card. So that'll just take a second and format the SD card. I'll just bring you in a little bit closer so you can uh, you can see the screen a little better there. And what's going on? There we go. So once we formatted it, we're just going to save our settings to a new file on the SD card. We'll just keep the default name just in case any uh, any options get overwritten and we want to revert back to them. So we'll press enter, save file, yes. Right, so that will have um, stored a copy of our settings so we don't lose any during the firmware update. Uh, we now need to unmount the SD card and we'll pop that out. And we're gonna take that back up to the computer and uh, copy over the, uh, the new firmware. All right, so we're back over at the computer now. Uh, if we scroll down to the bottom of the firmware update uh, page, need to tick the uh, have we read and understood the terms and conditions and download the firmware. Uh, that will just take a second to download. There we go. And once that's downloaded, uh, what we're going to do is uh, copy, extract the zip file and copy it over to the, um, uh, the, the, the root folder of the SD card. All right, so we're back over at the radio now. Uh, you actually need to copy it over into, there's a, a, a subfolder that formatting the SD card will create called uh, IC-7760. Uh, the firmware needs to be copied into the root of that folder rather than the root of the SD card. So we'll pop the SD card back into the radio again. Give that a second, blue lights uh, finish flashing. And then we're just gonna select firmware update. Uh, we'll get some warnings, uh, do it at your own risk. So we'll pop down, uh, do you agree to all of the above? We've made a backup of the settings and we'll just say yes. Uh, just warns you that some settings might be lost. So we'll say, uh, say yes, we've already made a backup of the settings. Right, we can see here we've got the firmware update 7760 underscore 112. So that's version 1.012. We're just gonna tap on that. Uh, it's then gonna give you some more warnings, uh, ask if you want to start updating. So we'll say yes. Right, you actually have to tap and hold uh, the yes button for it to start. It'll run through, check the uh, check the file, make sure it's okay before it applies anything. Runs through a few different options. This uh, this process takes a couple of minutes to uh, to apply.
Excellent. That's the firmware update all applied. If we go back into uh, into menu, um, <clears throat> others and information, we should now be able to see uh, under version that we're now at version 1.12. So we'll pop back up to the computer and have a look at exactly what changes this is uh, this is made to the radio. So we've got the uh, the file open here with all the information about the changes in firmware version 1.12. <coughs> So they've changed the uh, the set mode uh, for the network, and this, uh, by the looks of it, uh, just uh, is some changes to the audio audio buffer size menu, audio retransmission, uh, and a renaming of uh, of a couple of elements. Um, I suspect this is something that if you were using it with uh, a Wi-Fi network, which we'll talk about in a moment, uh, or over the internet, uh, may need some tweaking to get um, to get decent performance depending on the on the speed of the connection uh, they've also uh, reduced the network requirements the network speed requirements by quite a substantial amount uh, so previously uh, you needed five megabits from the controller to the RF deck and 10 megabits or better from the RF deck to the controller that's dropped substantially now to uh, two megabits and four megabits respectively um, now <coughs> it's worth noting that uh, the speed isn't everything. There's latency involved as well, and that's where things like the audio buffer size might need to be tweaked um, for things like remote internet operation. Uh, they've added some uh, some new CIV commands. I won't run through all of these. Uh, you know, if you want to download the uh, download the file and um, have a read through at your leisure, um, but these just relate to the uh, the new settings that they've added um, to allow those to be controlled by the uh, set by the computer. Um, most of this document just talks about the uh, connection between the RF deck and the controller. I think that's the the main uh, the main change, and I suspect this change is largely as a result of the recent launch of the um, I think it's the RC two uh, RC seventy seven sixty, which is you can now essentially buy a second uh, or third. Um, uh, remote control head uh, for it. So if you've got maybe um, two locations that you operate from, uh, you can buy a second one, leave it, you know, have one in uh, either location with a central RF deck somewhere that they're controlling. Uh, it's worth noting that you can't control, um, you can't use two uh, uh, remote heads at the same time. You can only control it from one or the other. Uh, but it's nice to have that option if um, if you've got a couple of different places that you operate from on a regular basis. Um, so just talking here about the, the routing between uh, the RF deck and the controller and the various different options that this now enables. Uh, so in internet via a router, if you've got both uh, the controller and the um, RF deck on the same LAN. Um, how it goes about getting the addresses depending on um, where the controller and the RF deck are, um, are situated. Uh, we'll skip through most of this. Um, and we'll come back to the uh, the wireless uh, stuff in a moment. Connecting it through the network again, you can read through all of this at your leisure. You don't need, you don't need me to run through all of it. Um, so, as well as the networking changes, um, I think the only other things that they've added uh, are, um, by the looks of it, the ability to save to a USB flash drive. Um, which is handy instead of having to use a, uh, an SD card. Uh, compatibility with larger SD cards um, is quite common to, to, to find very large SD cards these days, uh, especially if you've got any cameras lying around. Um, <clears throat> they've also changed the uh, partial reset so that the antenna memory is no longer cleared if you do a partial reset. And they've added the option to do um, a full reset for the, uh, for the RF deck. Uh, and they've also changed the uh, the full reset uh, so that it no longer resets the static IP. Um, there's a full set of uh, new CIV commands. And if we go back up to the wireless LAN, this is probably the bit that a lot of people um, are quite excited about, but it's a little bit misleading. So they've they talk about adding the ability to connect through a wireless LAN. Um, and whilst that's true, uh, it really, they haven't. Um, so the RF deck and the controller 
uh, neither of them actually have uh, wireless um, uh, capability built into them. So uh, essentially, they only have hardwired network capability. You would need to add um, some kind of wireless access point to one or both of those in order to allow them to connect to your network uh, wirelessly uh, or act as a you know wireless network bridge. Um, so while they, they they talk in a lot of the literature about uh, adding wireless uh, wireless LAN connections, um, strictly speaking, they they haven't added uh, Wi-Fi capability. Uh, you know, my understanding is that the hardware doesn't. Um, doesn't support that, uh, uh, but they they have had it, added the options around it to maybe be able to to tune the performance uh, for things like the audio buffering. Uh, if you are on a on a on a wireless network, which typically will have a higher latency than a um, than a normal local area network. Excellent. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, only a, a only a quick little look at the uh, at the new firmware. Um, if you did uh, like and comment down below and uh, subscribe for uh, for more exciting videos in the future